this sounds very uh, gentle. So uh, it makes me wonder if this divine dragon is actually a benevolent character. Hey music friends, this is Davi Vasco, I'm a music composer for games and today we're going to listen to and talk about the theme for a game that we have never talked about before here on the channel and it's one that you guys have requested a lot and that is Sekiro. So the track we're going to listen to today is Divine Dragon. So let's go. There's already a shakuhachi, right? A Japanese flute. Oh. This is not a, what I expected at all. This is very... Very elegant and more peaceful than usual, right, for Soulsborne. Now, at the beginning here, I got a very cool sensation from the chords that they're doing here at the beginning. It's a, it's a very simple cadence, it's just two chords that they keep alternating. Check this out. So, you can hear that he is just alternating between these two chords and this is a sad chord, just an, a normal sad chord and then this, which uh, I'm gonna call like a, a tense wondrous chord because uh, the actual technical term for this is a substitute dominant chord not to be confused with subdominant, which, which is another thing but as the name implies, it's a tense chord, but it's a substitute, it's an uncommon, uh, uh, surprising, and unusual tense chord. And this goes perfectly with this song here, because, I mean, I I've never uh, seen this boss, I, I don't know uh, anything about Sekiro, I've never played it, but the name of the song is Divine Dragon, right? So I, I suppose, I assume it's, it's a boss battle against a Divine Dragon. And this setting is very appropriate for the kind of chords that they're using here. Don't you get like a sense of wonder and awe and almost like a, a respectful fear uh, when you hear these chords? It feels like you're in the presence of something big and divine, right? Like the, the title of the song says. Can you hear? The shakuhachi, so gentle. This is so uncommon for. for souls born. And they're holding. They're not changing chords, they're, they're holding the same chord. All the way through. Oh, now they changed it. But they they held the same chord for a long time there, uh, and while the the melody was was playing at the top, the chord remained still the same. Uh, so this is a thing that actually happened happened in my previous video when I, I was talking about the Zinogar theme from Monster Hunter and. The thing that the two tracks have in common is that both are uh, inspired by Japanese music. And this is something they do a lot uh, when they are trying to mimic the, the style of Japanese music because the Western music that we know is very harmony focused. And we love all these different chords with different meanings and we keep changing the chords all the time in Western music, but not all music around the world is like that. Like for example, Middle Eastern music and African music pretty much has no harmony at all. And Japanese music has harmony, but it's it's 
less pronounced and less important in Japanese music than it is in Western music. And also, this single held chord It also, to me, gives a, a sensation of stillness and a kind of peace and, and gentleness, which is something very unusual, right, for a, a boss battle in a in a Soulsborne game. I've never uh, I, I've never seen this boss. I'm not seeing the boss right now. I'll have to see it later to edit the video. But I'm curious to to know what this fight looks like because this sounds very very peaceful. It makes me wonder also what the story behind this Divine Dragon is, because this music honestly sounds so benevolent. Because you guys know, like, Bloodborne and Dark Souls music is so loud and energetic and there's a ton of stuff going on, and it's very different from this. This sounds very uh, gentle, so uh, it makes me wonder if this Divine Dragon is actually a benevolent character, it's like a good uh, character and you end up fighting him for s some reason uh, maybe this is some kind of test or something that you're th this this divine dragon is proposing for you but he's actually good and, and not actually a, like a, a villain or something that's my guess yeah so now they're changing the chords oh beautiful Got a bit darker there for a second. These melodies on the Shakuhachi are so beautiful. They really have like a divine quality to them. It's getting a little bit darker. The same chord. Oh, the Wondrous chord. They did the, the Wondrous, they, they did the normal chord that they have been holding uh, for that the last part and then they did the wondrous chord again it's getting darker and what's going on Second phase. Damn, it feels a lot more intense. Still the same chord. Changing the harmony. Did you hear the Wondrous Chord again? So I feel like they're using again and again this Wondrous Chord to uh, portray, you know, the divinity of this thing and, you know, this sense of awe, but at the same time it's getting a lot more intense and a lot more tense than it, it was previously in the, the previous part. Still, it sounds a little bit more gentle and benevolent than what I'm used to for Soulsborne music, but then again, I haven't listen to a lot of secular music uh, so maybe all secular music is, is more like this I don't know 
And another cool thing I noticed here at the beginning of this second phase. Listen to this. So, the rhythm here is just a, a straightforward four beat measure. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But if you pay attention to the melody that the violins are doing, they are doing th something called triplets. And the triplets, as the name suggests, it, it's it, they, these are notes grouped in groups of three. So you can count them on threes. Check this out. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And while the, the song itself is not a waltz, like it, like I said, it, it's a four beat measure, this these triplets on the strings give it like a waltz, like a three beat measure kind of feel to it. It, it also s makes it sound a little bit like a scherzo, which is another like dance uh, style of rhythm from classical music. So there's a little hint of a dance kind of sensation here. And there's a lot of parallels, of course, that we can draw between a battle, you know, a duel and a dance. And Soulsborne boss battles certainly feel and look a lot like dances a lot of time, right? So that's what I, I feel like they're doing here. Again, I haven't seen this battle, but I can definitely imagine uh, very elegant uh, movements and synchronized movements as this character and the dragon fight each other as if in a dance. Wonder score again, right? And this duet between Shakuhachi and, and the strings. Oh. It's getting intense. Listen to how paced there's a lot of rhythm in this, even though there's very little percussion. Oh. It's getting quieter. And they're holding. Holding that one chord again. Such a beautiful duet. But they keep repeating the wonder squad again and again. Oh. And now the resolution, right? It's about to end. You probably noticed this already, but this channel is all about sharing the music from the games that we love with each other. That's how I came to know Sekiro. I didn't know the game, didn't know the music, but you guys recommended it to me. And I have more videos about the music from the Soulsborne games that we love. I'm gonna put a playlist here. And Elden Ring comes out in a few days, did you know? Have you seen my video about Elden Ring music? I'm gonna put it here. And remember, whenever you're ready to spread your wings and go on a music journey again, I'll see you there.